greetings from Indianapolis, Indiana, the 2011 Nashville Conference. Paul Jason with Public Gaming Research Institute here with Tom Little, President and Chief Executive Officer of Intralot USA. And we were talking about, well, Tom Little, as most of you would know, has a lot of international experience. His, his, his uh, mission right now is to be supporting the customers in the U.S., building the market in the U.S., but he brings an international perspective, and internationally, especially in Europe, the market, the industry has evolved a little bit faster than it has in the United States. But I, was, I asked Tom, isn't it the case, don't you feel that the U.S. market, the U.S. industry, the leadership of the U.S. lotteries is poised more than ever before to perhaps accelerate the rate at which they adapt new innovation and changes and 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 uh, especially as it regards to consumer touch points and new ways of uh, uh, reaching out to the consumer. I mean, basically, that's right. I think uh, the European market is is quite a bit ahead of what we have here in the United States. We have a lot of you know laws and things in place that prohibit us from using the new technology that's out there. Europe uh, doesn't seem to be bothered with that. They've gone ahead and gone to the internet use the technology to drive the content, the new content that requires you to keep the new and upcoming generations to play the lottery. And you're starting finally to see some of that now in the United States with the, the they are now looking at getting to that new technology or using it for the content. The it, It's not that the state lotteries want to increase their sales, they just want to be able to keep the sales they have and stop them from deteriorating. If we don't use this new technology, then that means that the that the younger folks coming up, younger, even some of the older people, if you don't have it on a cell phone or a PC, they're, they're not going to do it. So we need to grasp this new technology and put it to work for ourselves in the United States. Kind of a sensitive question, but I think we can uh, address it in a diplomatic or intelligent way. It came up in the, in the vendor discussion yesterday, uh, in the vendor session, and what was the point that was made was somebody, a lot of people are putting bills and ideas and proposals before shapers of public policy, especially in the uh, U.S. Congress at the federal level. And I don't know that people are really, that there's anybody stepping up to defend the interests of the stakeholders of lotteries, but really states. It's about the states having the right to decide how and where and when to channel the economic benefits of this industry. How can it be done? We, we, one idea is that, well, lottery directors should do this, that, and the other. Lottery directors should be making this point to their constituents, to the legislature and to their executive branch. I'm thinking that a lottery director might say, well, that's not, that's not really in my job description to contribute to the formulation of public policy. What would you say to a lottery director who would, who would say that? Well, I think you were, you were there when I was on that panel yesterday, and that, that was brought up. And I said, it, it is your job. You do have an open door to the governor, and you are the one, along with us and the rest of the community, that should be lobbying against, for states' rights against these different entities that are trying to break into our marketplace. And, and I think you remember I said there's, there's the uh, Nevada casinos, the Indian casinos, the illegal guys, the card rooms, and now even the federal government are trying to get in on our space. And it, it's states' rights. I mean, these are, this is the thing that lotteries were based on. And the federal government back when New Hampshire came on in 1964, that was the idea that it's a state's the states have the responsibility to, to do a lottery and not do a lottery. It has nothing to do with the federal government. And that's what I had asked all the people in that room to, yep. to get together as one voice and allow us to keep our states' rights and allow us to keep our space. Because it's really not just about lotteries. It's the lottery director who would be at least one, if not the, expert in the state on the industry of gaming and gambling, except for maybe New Jersey and, and Nevada. And so it's kind of on the shoulders of the lottery director to uh, help the shapers of public policy within the state understand that it's, it's not about lottery. It's about states defending their right. The state may choose to do one thing or another. Uh, they may even choose to do it without the lottery. But it should be the state that decides how to channel the economic benefits of this industry. That's right. Definitely. I mean, again, it's back to the state's rights. Mm -hmm. um, this will be an editorial pause because I forgot the other question I was going to ask. Uh, 
But there was something else. <laughs> oh, there was. Um, I'm going to take a commercial break for myself on this one because I am trying, I have been uh, blogging and writing about this topic to some extent. My writing is sort of preaching to the choir. I don't know how much I'm read by people other outside of our industry. But we are trying to create, with the help of the commercial leaders in this industry, some concrete information, not just my theories and opinions about why what we say is correct, uh, but some, providing some concrete information about the direct impact of internet game, if internet gaming were to be uh, allowed uh, by by, out, by um, operators outside of the state, by big casino or other operators, what kind of impact it would have directly on the lottery itself, uh, or also on the future ability of, of the state to channel the economic impact uh, the, or the economic benefits of new forms of gaming. I don't know that there's a question in there. Do you have any comment or thoughts on how we can give more concrete information to the directors to help the legislators? Well, your your article the last Monday tried to put a number on what effect this would have on on the lotteries and, and the money going to good causes. And I think the I think it was a very good article and it had a lot of truth in it. I don't think it portrayed how bad it could get for lotteries. I mean, all these other people that we're talking about or all the other gaming entities, they want to use the same new technology that we want to use. Mm -hmm. And the, the problem is they want to use it in our space. And what you had written in your article what was a good article, but it, uh, I think it would be, over time, a lot worse than that. As you, as you use these new technologies, you're going to want to bring in the new games and the things that the new technologies bring with it, which is skill-based games and other sorts of games that we haven't had before. I mean, and I've been doing this for 37 years, and in that 37-year period, the only real innovation that has come to the to the industry is was the advent of the instant ticket game. Mm -hmm. There hadn't been any really big thing, and maybe Lotto coming on with an online Lotto. Uh, that's been it. Now you're seeing a pent-up demand of all this new technology and all these new types of games that you can have and the content that you can have with this new technology. And everybody wants a piece of it. The, the problem is, it's our piece to take, not their piece to take. Yeah. And as we put numbers to it, as we measure, as we try to measure and quantify the impacts, as as Tom was just pointing out, the first study that we did just measured the the migration of lottery players over to internet right. poker. Okay, and and there is a migration, and there is a loss of, of of a significant amount of money, but that doesn't even begin to point at the ultimate impact of having a a a competitive landscape of gaming options that would um, that would open up a whole new world to people who are now playing lottery, and the state could and should or could, has the right to decide that, but but they should be making those decisions for one thing to channel the benefits to the state, and for another to have be fully informed about the impact on all of the interests, all of the current interests. Well, that, well that's right, and, and the, the amount of money that the lotteries take in for good causes is, is a high percentage. If you turn this over to a commercial group, they don't have to send the money to good causes, okay? So they can, they can come up with a game that's, that the lottery couldn't even begin to compete with. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you know, if, if it stays in the lottery, then we get to keep the good causes and the money for education. If it doesn't, then it gonna, is going to go to benefit a business. This will be to continued. Uh, this is obviously an ongoing topic, and there's hardly anything more pressing right now to be continued. Tom Little, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Mike.